another floor. Hi, are you citizens of the U.S.? Do you have reasonable, articulable suspicion that I've committed a crime? Oh. Am I being detained? Answer my question, please. Am I being detained? Yes. I'm being detained. What's reasonable, articulable suspicion do you have I've committed a crime? What is he doing? I don't know what he's doing. He didn't answer his question. Mm -hmm. Am I being detained? Yes, sir. For immigration inspection. Do you have reasonable, articulable suspicion that I've committed a crime? Well, no, I'm just doing my immigration inspection. You so, cannot detain me unless you have reasonable, articulable well, suspicion that I've committed a crime. Well, I'm explaining to you what I'm doing. Let me tell you why. Have I committed a crime? I'm, I'm determining your citizenship. That's what I'm doing here. Okay? I have no uh, no obligation to answer. You can direct your questions to my attorney. Okay. Well, give me a fair control over here. Reason why I don't Am want I being to, detained? I don't, I don't want to. Yes. For I'm being detained. Yes. What is your reasonable, articulable I'm suspicion I've committed a crime? You're turning me citizenship, sir. That's, what it is. that's not an answer to the question. Go pull it I am not well. I'm being detained against my will and illegally. Okay. Well, um, what are, our purpose uh, here at this checkpoint is... I know what your purpose just is. to ascertain... And I'm not answering questions today. Okay. Um, we have to be fully satisfied that you're a U.S. citizen. Do you have any reason to suspect that I am okay. not? No, sir. But that's by... You're not, not will be going. Stop. You're not free to go? Okay. Am I... Do you have reasonable, articulable suspicion I've committed a crime? No, sir. But then then I can go. You see, the laws in the United States say you can only detain me if you have reasonable and articulable suspicion of a crime. Not one of you have articulated okay. one okay. suspect that I am a crime. Okay, well, I'm glad you're up with your uh, law, but unfortunately, I guess you haven't looked at the immigration law. The Immigration and Naturalization Act number 287 states that we can temporarily, sir, only for a brief moment, stop you legally just so that we can ask you a quick question. You have. If you are a U.S. citizen. You have. So Do you have any reason to believe I am not? I'm asking you that question. Are you a United States citizen? You aren't a United States citizen. The uh, a citizen, as defined by the Black's Law Dictionary, says that you that a government trades an obligation of protection okay. for a dirty, duty of servitude. That's the law. You, the Supreme Court of the United States, has okay. said that it, the law that law enforcement agents have no obligation to protect you. Therefore, Why you're not you a citizen. Just ask a question. You're not a citizen, of, he has you're not asked a citizen a of the United States. You are a subject. Of the United States? You are a subject. You are a subject. Okay, so the question that's all right, sir. That's okay. The question is, were you born in this amazing country that is the United States? I was born on planet Earth. Okay, planet Earth is on this country. No, oh, yeah. Okay. All right? Okay, but you still not free to go. Was she born in the same place you were born? Nope. Not was in the same born? place, no. In the same, in the, were you born in the United States? Do you have reasonable articulable suspicion we've committed a crime? No, sir, but you must answer my question. No, I don't. Are you a United States I don't have citizen? to answer any of your questions without my sir, attorney listen, present. I'm telling you right now, sir, that you are briefly so being detained. I have a, I have a question. What's, yes, what does briefly mean? Briefly, it means all we have to do was just get an answer from you. You know as well as I do, this is a drug checkpoint, okay? There's You've searched it with thing. a dog. This is an immigration checkpoint. Then why is the dog out there because sniffing for think? illegal aliens? Yes, do, sir. do illegal, illegal, illegal aliens smell illegal. different than American no, citizens? No, not illegal aliens. He's trained to detect concealed humans. So we've determined that you're there are way three humans in this head country. here, okay? We haven't but determined any such thing. You are a United States citizen because you are acting as a person who believes their rights as a United States citizen. And I believe you are a United States citizen. It's unfortunate that you're coming through here without fully understanding the law. Oh, I understand And not clearly. allowing us to do our job. The only people that determine law that that is a person are five Supreme Court justices. Okay? Not you, so, not me. So you just wasted your time. You are a U.S. citizen, okay? Thank and you. And send you on your way. 
and thank you for being an outstanding citizen and helping life. Thank you. So apparently all you have to do is be a belligerent jackass <laughs> and you're determined to be a citizen. <laughs> We don't know if you're someone up here gathering intelligence. We don't know what you're doing. Well, I'd hope that everyone gathers intelligence. Good morning from Porkfest 2015. We're going to be going on a bit of a, a road trip today, and the plan is to go to Derby Line, Vermont, where there's a portion of the border that actually crosses through a town. And there's even a, apparently a library where the line crosses through, and uh, all of y'all have decided to join me. And what motivated you to come on the, uh, the run for the border here today? Uh, I've been to Porkfest several times. I would just want to get out and explore more and see how the world passport thing works out. Uh, Are you going to try to cross the border? Yeah. Yeah, I've just got an enhanced driver's license, which I think is a chipped driver's license, which... That you know, should I've, get you I've crossed a few right. times yeah. with it, so... And, uh, Mehdi, you're from Canada. Originally. I'm from Canada, so I got my Canadian passport. I'll see what happens trying to get back in. I usually get Have you passports. ever walked across the border? Never. We're so going to try that today. To, yeah, too. All right. <laughs> well, uh, being against the idea of borders and imaginary lines, I think it's an important thing that anarchists would be involved with, is trying to demilitarize and neutralize these zones in which people can't cross because of citizenship or other petty reasons. Yeah, and uh, I Mandy. actually saw this story on a... I guess a history channel, something or the a other. A story about Derby Line. About Derby Line. They talked about the line going directly through the library, and I said I was always going to go there. And this being my first pork fest, I said, what better way to experience than with a bunch of fellow anarchists? So I get to fulfill my dream and, and do it recklessly. And what is your, uh, what are you going to use to try to cross the border? We're going to see if a regular driver's license okay. works. Okay. All right. So we got the enhanced driver's license, Canadian passport. <laughs> you got a U.S. passport. I have a U.S. passport and a New Hampshire driver's license. We're going to try it first with just the New Hampshire Just driver's the driver's license. license. And then just a Georgia, Georgia driver's, driver's license. license. We'll and then I have the <laughs> world passport issued by the World Service Authority. And uh, are you coming? No, I just want to okay. wish you good luck. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate Peace. it. We're about ready to head out. We're here uh, with uh, Mehdi. We're actually now in Derby Line in a very, very, what appears to be a very small main street with mostly empty storefronts. It does look like a lot, a lot of abandoned buildings. It's sad. I'm very curious as to whether these buildings were abandoned before the Border Patrol came in. That's a good question. Yeah, what did this after. town look like? I mean, there's a cafe, but they're not even open. Yeah, too. But uh, none of us have cell service except for you, Medi, and so you're uh, looking for, I think it's the Haskell Library. Yeah, it is. Here it is. Yeah. I have roaming, but... But it says it's in Quebec. It says the building's in Vermont, but the address is in Quebec, so I think that's the direction we should go. And turn back and report to border crossing. Highway 55 or Route 143. So this is, this potted plants are literally the border. Apparently, and then we turn, turning from the potted plants to the threatening sign. From uh, this is a little more of a threatening sign. It's got a fine. Yeah. But it looks like this house is like in the U.S. Yet it looks like it's getting power from Canada. Yeah, it does look that way. But then it's also connected over here. <laughs> well, we came all this way. And it's closed. Now, it's interesting they put those potted plants on that street, but if you really were wanting to like get through, it wouldn't be that hard to turn into this parking lot, cut across the grass, and get into Canada. Like right there. <laughs> the parking lot is public, right? It's public property. Yeah. I mean, the, the the library is public property. So it's just There's no flower pots over there to keep us out. Are you guys going to open today? No? Oh, is it? Oh. Is it a Canadian holiday? It's a Canadian, <laughs> it's a Canadian holiday. Woo! Thank you. Ah, didn't know that one, huh? I didn't know that either. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. It's Who is St. John holiday. the Baptist? We don't, have, we don't have that in Ontario. It's a provincial Oh, okay. Oh, we picked the wrong day to come to, to, come to the border town. And another camera. Don't see any on this and side. There's a sign that'll probably be threatening. Access prohibited.
Here's the borderline, US and Canada. Oh, you're an illegal. Garrett's an illegal. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> We're not supposed to cross that, I guess. Well, they want us to, why would they put a sign there if they don't want us to read it? Okay. So uh, there's some sort of power source because they have the solar panels. Yeah. I wonder what that's powering. A or gate. It's electric. Yeah. Where's the other camera? Just that one there. I don't see one on the US side here. <laughs> There's one. Oh, really? Where? Telephone pole. Oh, up there, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, of course. So here we are getting close to Interstate 91. There's another street down here, the FedEx building, and yet another gate. It's almost symbolic, isn't it? I mean, you've got this big grassy area right here that anybody in a car could easily <laughs> cruise right onto and then be in Canada. I think it demonstrates the lack of threat of this area. Oh, look who's watching. All of this just to keep people out from seeing a different country. It's so different over there. Oh. It says RN instead of stop. That's right. Which is interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> After touring Derby Line's various border streets, we walk east onto the bridge over Interstate 91 to document the major checkpoints on both sides there. While we encounter no issues from the Canadian side, it's not long before the U.S. border guards start shouting at us. Being shouted at. Someone in a car. He was yelling at me for sure. They started walking over here. I'm getting very uppity over there. It's funny people that are so paranoid of cameras that are absolutely surrounded of cam by yeah. cameras. I couldn't even try to count how many cameras they have focused in different directions down there and they're afraid of our little right. $200 Our security is being violated! I guess they know at this point we're not just tourists. I'm yeah. just taking care <laughs> They're going over to a cruiser. They're walking over to a cruiser. They're coming up this way. Just plan to keep walking personally. doing is not here but one we don't know who you are granted I'm a human being okay all we're asking is if you're gonna do that just ask because we don't know if you're someone up here gathering intelligence we don't know what you're doing well I'd hope that everyone gathers intelligence I don't feel the need to ask to exercise my right to freedom of the press okay. Because if you have to ask, it's no longer a right. Isn't that Are right, media gentlemen? Representatives? I'm sorry? Are you a media representative? I don't know what that means. It sounds like a legal Are you term. Are a member of the press? Again, I don't, I don't know what questions you're asking me. You join? It depends on where you're from. All right. You guys have a good day. All right. Freedom, baby. Have a good day, guys. Y'all should just follow orders like we do. Life's so easy when you just follow orders. You don't have to think. <laughs> <laughs> 
when he said turn it off and hear me out, I started turning on my secondary camera. <laughs> oh, maybe we should see what the secret thing is he's gonna tell us, but I guess it never came out. We didn't even check our licenses or try to. Well, they don't really have a reason to detain us. Right. right. Oh, no radar detectors allowed in Canada, huh? Interesting. Oh, here's the border, right here. At this point, due to a coerced agreement with the Canadian border guards, we're unable to show you our approach and initial interaction with their agent, though it was recorded. Welcome to Stansted. During the interaction, he claims that Canada has a free press, but that apparently does not apply at border checkpoints. After being very nicely threatened with arrest for obstruction, I stopped recording and we began the process of checking IDs and questioning. We were detained for approximately 90 minutes, and four out of five of us ended up being allowed across the border. All these things are without borders, but there's very much a border here. So while we were in there, uh, the head agent in charge came down and talked to us and said there was no filming on the property committed. And so we were showed a, um, a piece of paper that said like, what you're authorized to film if you get permission. And it was still limited. It still said that you couldn't identify agents. You couldn't zoom in on toll booths or the, toll booths, oh, the checkpoint the booths. And it said you couldn't um, also identify passengers, vehicles, identifying info pretty much for anything. So it sounds like it, you can get permission to film at those checkpoints, but you're very limited in what you can disclose about the checkpoints. Um, and yeah, that's it's uh, sounds. They made it seem like they were very nice for authorities with guns. Uh, compared to Americans, in fact, we saw there's a lot of things that would have been interesting to document, like Border Patrol agent giving a dog a treat that was coming across the border. Um, we were the people that were detained the longest. Everyone that's come through went through fairly quickly. Everyone else seemed to have passports. We did not present passports. We only had uh, licenses that we used as IDs. Ian did try to use a world passport. That was denied. He was asked for, or wasn't, they said they are going to need more identification, so he presented his driver's license. He's still being held, but allegedly will be out shortly. In Canada, I was not allowed to enter. They did not like the world passport. They say the world passport doesn't actually identify my so-called citizenship, even though it says I'm a world citizen. There are certain countries that you need to have a, uh, what is called a visa to come into Canada from. And so if I were coming from one of those places or were originally from one of those places, it would be a problem. And so that's why they couldn't accept the world passport. They did let all four of the other folks in by just showing driver's licenses. So normally you just need a driver's license to get into Canada. I was denied ultimately because I've been convicted for obstructing government administration and also, also the more recent so-called unsworn falsification situation. So basically I am prohibited from coming into Canada for basically a decade. And then if I want to come in, there's some sort of a rehabilitation process uh, that I would need to go through, which costs money and time and whatever. So now I'm going all by myself uh, into the U.S. checkpoint. And given that I am all by myself, I feel like I should probably record this interaction. Good afternoon. It is not. Should I turn it off? Yes, please. All right. Is it illegal to record? It is. Uh, Ian has just been released from the border checkpoint. Yeah. So you were detained at the U.S. border? That's correct. Wow. Did they escort you back to the U.S. border, or did they just tell you to walk How up there? I walked uh, from Canada to the U.S. Uh, side. was told to stop recording because I was by myself. I figured I was going to record as long as I could. I was told to stop recording and then told the world passport's no good. I needed another form of ID. I showed them the license. They asked uh, me to go in there. He asked a bunch of questions about, am I a citizen? I'm like, well, you know, you guys would probably consider me a citizen of the U.S. Um, they claim it's my obligation to prove that I'm a U.S. citizen in order to be granted entry uh, in here. Do I have a birth certificate? No, I don't have a birth certificate with me. Are you? And so I said, are you going to deny me entry into my home country? And he said, no, I just have to, you know, it has to be proven that you're a U.S. citizen. And there were several more questions about have I ever exited the country before and I had back when I had the old passport and by the way they told me that an expired US passport is valid proof that you are a US citizen 
We're back together with the uh, crew from uh, the trip to Canada, and uh, it's actually a few days later now at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. We're on the last day um, because we're in such a rush to get out. We didn't really have time to do a recap the, the day of. So um, what do you all think of, uh, of how it went? I'd say four out of five is a successful number. Mm -hmm. um, I would also say that for my first big activist event, why go why go small, go big, and play with the U.S. Border Control? It was your first time leaving the U.S., right? Uh, absolutely, yeah. yes. And you didn't know what to expect, right? I did not know what to expect. You were kind of holding back in the beginning, but then you came up and you got through with your driver's license. I did. Uh, just a driver's license. No enhanced thing, no RFID chip. Um, weren't really hassled by the Canadian folks. They were a lot nicer than the U.S. Border Patrol, who mm -hmm. asked me a few questions, and I'm very well aware I could have been detained, but... I think they were just kind of sick of us and ushered us through back into the country. Well, yeah, because I got uh, detained quite a bit by the U.S. guys, and I also had a driver's license. They gave me a lot of trouble, but you didn't really have any trouble coming back yet. The whole line of questioning consisted basically of him asking me if I had a birth certificate with me, which I did not. Then he asked me if I had ever owned a passport. I said no. And he asked me my date of birth, what we were carrying in, which was food from the restaurant we went to in Canada. Mm -hmm. And then he kind of just told me to get lost. So I think he was just sick of our group, actually. Hmm. All right. Um, now, Mehdi, you, uh, you're from Canada originally. From Canada, yeah. Uh, I thought the initial, we had an initial uh, meeting with the Border Patrol, I guess. They were the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol because of the videotaping on the street and in the States, which was allowed. It went, I think, pretty well. They didn't, you know, they didn't really do too much. Uh, the border part, I was nervous because I was nervous about coming back in because my car was in the States, and so I was a bit nervous about that. I found the Canadian side a lot nicer. At least they didn't feel, they didn't, they had a better way of communicating. They were in charge, yes. You know, they have the costumes and the badges and mm -hmm. whatever trappings of government, but the way they spoke was very... Relaxed, at least I found. Yeah, I, agree. I came a lot after when you, what time you guys went. I mean, they called for a pizza place to see if it was open for us. Right. I mean, I don't know what if, if that service. Like, yeah, I wish they're, we they're the server protecting. I got my money's worth in the serve aspect. <laughs> That's for sure because they really have good service there. Coming back wasn't too bad either. Actually, I think they already knew us from the videotape. So, yeah, but it was a good experience. It really was. Well, I mean. You, we were detained for an hour and a half, basically, so I don't know if yeah, it's right. a good experience from <laughs> that aspect. Yeah, but that's actually but, true, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was an experience, <laughs> and, uh, and we were able to at least help some people understand what that experience is like for people, and I think that's the real value of it. Paul? Um, My well, takeaway was similar. I, I noticed the stark contrast in the uh, degree of, I would call it professionalism, when someone's treat you like a human being. Mm-hmm. Uh, versus the uh, just the robot-like automatons on the U.S. side that were just, and uh, they tried to dehumanize themselves as much as possible just Somewhere. to maintain that raw authority, you know, to intimidate people. I think it's just to get people to just cower and do what they say. And, uh, it was it was pretty stark on those two border crossing points because, like he was saying, the contrast. You mean? Yeah, the contrast. Yeah, yeah. yeah the uh, Canadians were. You know, especially that one guy who's downright jovial. So, yeah. <laughs> but on the other hand, we were detained for an hour. So, <laughs> yeah, it was funny. The Canadians detained us for a longer period of yeah. time than the U.S. guys did, but it was a more comfortable detention. It was more friendly. <laughs> Um, detention. <laughs> you know, I think we should also mention too that with none of us on either side did they check bags. That's true. They went on our Strange. word when we were bringing our food in. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm kind of questioning the real responsibilities and duties of the patrol if they're not checking bags and making sure you're not a terrorist. Mm. Yeah, it could have been packing anything in there. That's yeah. for sure. Garrett, what did you think? I think it was a very successful trip. I mean, it was unfortunate that you were not allowed in. Um, it does seem that both sides, obviously before we crossed the Canadian border, the U.S. side was taking issue with filming that was going on just out on a public street. <clears throat> now, uh, it's, it appears that you were detained for a longer period of time. I'm not sure if that's because you were denied on the other side or if because you filmed going why. into the United States yeah. checkpoint. Um, but it seems that our takeaway can be that if you film at a international border crossing, you're very likely to be detained for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if the, the U.S. authorities inquired into wanting to see your videotape or, or that you They, at the very tape. end, uh, did ask about what I had recorded, and I sort of explained to him. And one of the guys looked like he wanted to see the footage, but the older guy just kind of waved him off and said, basically, let him go with it. Mm -hmm. So... 
So it does seem that there's the understanding at least that our right to record exists. Had we not asserted it, maybe mm -hmm. they would have acted as though it had not. But uh, we did assert it at, at every point at which it was questioned. And I'm pleased with the response of both sides. Um, one of my issues with the United States side was that they wanted to they wanted to tell us something off camera that needed to be relayed that could not be relayed publicly. And if they're interacting with the public, I don't see why anything should be secret about that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, they don't know us from Adam, so they should treat us as though we are what we are as the general public. Um, the Canadian side, even though they wanted us to turn off the cameras, I didn't get the impression that there was anything secretive that was necessarily going to go on. I mean, granted, anytime someone tells you off to turn off the camera, it evokes that. But uh, it was a very standard processing from what I was expecting from the Canadian side as far as what's your business, how long do you plan to be there, are you bringing anything in? And taking our word for everything that we said was always appreciated. The authorities mm. don't always necessarily take your word for what you said. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I thought that uh, you know it was, it was an interesting contrast. And similar to uh, the last time I, I actually did cross the border, the Canadian guys were just, they seemed more easygoing uh, than, than the U.S. guys. The U.S. guys this time, you know, they had a real martial kind of feel. They had the military style, haircuts and everything. You didn't really see that with the Canadian side. No, I got the impression that the United States side had far more of a patrol presence in the streets of Derby Line, Vermont, than there was at all. I didn't oh, really? see any border patrol. No cruisers around in Stansted, Canada? Right. Canada? There did not no. seem to be on the Just Canadian the side any enforcement. Yeah. Interesting. Just the, the checkpoint itself. Well, also, too, we should mention the fact that when we went into Derby Line that day, you know, the town surrounding the checkpoint was completely desolate and the buildings were empty and this was supposed to be Main Street. Mm, yeah. So, I, like all of us, I'm kind of wondering if that checkpoint was the cause of this and if that is what's preventing people from wanting to live in the town. I know I wouldn't want to live in a town where there's a bunch of cops. What it kind of looked like in that town is that the houses were on one side and the businesses were largely on the other side and they choked them off from each other. Exactly. So, you know, you know, I wonder if the town is drying up and blowing away because of the border being shut. Sure. The commercial infrastructure seemed to be just across the Canadian side of the mm -hmm. line. There were some cafes, restaurants, and some convenience stores and such. And the only thing on the American side of the line was one one giant Irving gas station. Every other restaurant, cafe, is closed. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks for coming along. Hopefully it was a learning experience for all of us and maybe to some extent the, uh, the viewers at home. I think the big takeaway is, yes, you can get into Canada with a license. That's no problem. And then uh, coming back into the U.S., they could hold you up like they did with me or they might just let you through like they did with Mandy. Yes. I mean, it's, so it's a roll of the dice. They were claiming to me that I had to, it was my obligation to prove that I was a U.S. citizen. And when they would ask me questions about, you know, are you a U.S. citizen? I, I wasn't answering straight out because I don't believe in those ideas, right? Um, but they do. And if I wanted to get back in, so I kind of answered it in sort of a generic, like, well, you guys would probably consider me a U.S. citizen. Like, I didn't want to identify <laughs> with it. So it's kind of given them tough answers and now, that might have delayed my detention as well. So I don't know. It's interesting. Like tough you answers some. with all of them. <laughs> yeah. Because when we were first approached, you know, about the cameras on the bridge, uh, they were firing off some questions, and you know, if you don't do this every day, you're a little intimidated. But you guys just held your ground great. Cool. Well, we're uh, about ready to get to the group photo here at yes. the Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's the final day, and uh, thanks you guys for coming on the trip, and uh, it's been fun. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Chronicling, chronicling the transition, transition to a voluntary, voluntary society. Freekeen.com also, also has comments and discussion, and discussion forums so you, so you can, can be heard. heard.